Wow, what an update to calendar and reminders in iOS 18. You can see some of the updates here. It's a lot more efficient and quicker to use. There's this new monthly view. It looks a lot nicer. So let's just dive right into all the new features. One of the biggest changes to the calendar is that now you can see reminders in here, whether you're in the monthly view, weekly view, or the daily view. And you can see your events are still in the rectangle shape and so are your reminders, but the reminders have this little checkbox, that little circle next to it. So that just lets you know that that's a reminder. If it's filled in, it's complete. If it's not, it's not complete. And here's a good example. We'll go to this day. And you can see that I've got two reminders and one event here. Also, the color of the checkbox corresponds to what list it's in. So you can see a few of these are red. A lot of these are blue. That, that's my chores list. There's a lot in here. Some of them are gray and a couple are green. So that all just depends on how you customize your reminders at the reminders app. And if you go to a reminder by tapping on it, we'll go to this one. It says take trash in from September 4th. It shows when it's due. It shows the other events within the near hours, which uh, in a window below, which we've always had with events. Uh, below the due date, it shows what list it's in and the notes that are attached to it. You can also edit them from here. If you tap the edit button in the top right, you can change the date, time, add early reminders or repeats, add tags, location, or have it remind you when you're messaging someone. You can flag it at a priority change the list, add subtasks, or an image. There's also a link to show and reminders, so if you tap that, it goes to your reminders app and shows that reminder inside of the corresponding list. Now I've got a lot of repeating reminders, like checking the mail daily, taking the trash out weekly, and various cleaning lists. So future repeating reminders appear as more hollowed out than current repeating reminders, with text that is more transparent. That tells you that it's a future reminder and because it's a future repeating reminder the reminder for that future date will not show up in the reminders app you can only see the current reminder in the reminders app until you complete the current and upcoming next reminders you cannot edit it says this is a future repeating reminder you can only edit the current reminder and it shows you a link to go to the current or repeating reminder in the calendars app. Now let's try adding a, a reminder through the calendar app. You can do this by pressing the plus button in the top right, and at the top, you can choose from an event or a reminder. Switch to reminder. Now because you're adding this reminder through the calendar app, it needs a set due date. There's no option for no due date. That's another thing too. Reminders without a due date do not show up in the calendar app. They're not even off the site or anything. They just won't show up there. If you want to create a reminder without a due date, you'll need to create it through the reminders app or Siri. For an example, let's remind myself to buy the iPhone 16 Pro. We'll put that in my to purchase list. That's a list of things I want to purchase. We need a due date, so we'll make it due around mid-October. We'll do October 15th. No notes, no exact time, no repeat. Let's tap on details. This will show you all the options for details that you'll also see if you create a reminder for the reminders app. Here, you'll have an option for an early reminder. We'll do one week before. You can also add tags. For example, we can add tags for iPhone, Apple, and phone. Furthermore, you can add a location, set it to remind you when you're messaging someone, a select person, flag it, and add a priority. We can make it medium, for example, and add an image or URL. This is all stuff we had before when you add a reminder in the reminders app. Let's tap the add button in the top right. Now it's added. If we scroll down to October 15th, you can see it right there next to the yellow circle. That's the color of my to purchase list. You can then show this in reminders by tapping the show and reminders link. And there we go. Here's my to purchase list and there's my iPhone 16 Pro reminder. Now I also have big updates to each calendar view. All of these calendar views have existed before. There's compact, stacked, details and list, but these have been updated to become easier to look at and provide much more information at a glance. Before on the list and compact views, it would just show a gray dot under each and any day that has one or more events, which is nearly every day now that repeating reminders show up in here. It wasn't very easy to tell what events are on which days unless you're at the list view and you could technically tap on different days and see the events pop up in the window below the list. But now each day 
it shows color-coded dots or lines, and the longer the line, the more events or reminders are scheduled for that day. For example, some days just show dots, like on September 1, 2, 6, 9, 12, 16, 22, 23, 26, 27, and 30. Let's go to September 14th. You can see I have a reminder that's green, a gray reminder, and one that's going to be blue, and one that's red. However, all reminders show up as gray in their respective dots, making up the line under that day, no matter what list they're in or the set color of that list. You could tell at just a glance what you may be busy with on each day. For example, I have two calendars that I use a lot, personal and work. Those are red and orange respectively. So on the 20th, for example, the line shows a red dot, then a gray dot, then a red dot making up a red and gray line. That's because first I have an event in my personal calendar, then a reminder, then another event in my personal calendar all on that day. Another example is the second. The only thing going on that day is Labor Day, and because my holiday calendar is purple, it just shows a purple dot on that day. This is very useful because it's a lot of essential information at a glance. You can quickly tell how busy certain days should be and what you may be busy with. It tells you how busy and what's busy. And you can easily see exactly what's happening on a certain day by tapping on a day and it will show you events and reminders for that day in the window below. I can easily tell that days 1, 2, 8, 9, 12, 16, 26, 29, and 30 won't be very busy, whereas days 13, 14, 17, 18, 20, and 21 are going to be more busy. Again, you could tell that I have work on days 5, 6, 7, 13, and 15, and on days 13, 17, 20, 21, and 22, I have personal events. Also, it tries to order the events in the line, so if you have a events in your personal calendar in the morning, and then a, like a reminder early afternoon, and then an event for say like a work calendar in the evening, the line will show red, gray, orange, because it goes in order from left to right. Now let's look at stacked calendar. This takes compact or list view and makes each eventual reminder into bars instead of dots that make up the lines. These bars are color coded to your calendar set color and stack on top of each other like the name set. If there are more than three events and reminders on a certain day, it will show the first two events and reminders and will show the rest in the third row as plus two for example on the 14th. If we scroll throughout my calendar you can see that multiple times throughout with days that have more reminders than others. If an event lasts over multiple days, it will stack bars in the same row as each other in the same color of that calendar and each bar is seamlessly connected to each other, appearing as one long bar. As you can see, for example, on the 20th or the 22nd, it's just one long bar. It shows you that it goes for multiple days. Then there's compact view. This is just like list view, but without the list window at the bottom. One difference is that when you tap on a day, it will bring you to the single day view. It shows you exactly when each reminder or event is on that day. From here, you have the options to go back to monthly view or switch to multi-day view or list of events across multiple days when you're in the single day view. But we're focused on monthly view. So finally, there's a detailed view. This one is my personal favorite. Now each week takes up a bit more room on the screen, which means you may not be able to fit as many weeks or days on the screen. But despite that it still color codes all of your events and it gives you a brief headline of the events or reminders. Because there's not much room in each row, it can't show the full title, but something as short as work or even packing, for example, you can still see the full title of those. If the event spans across multiple days, like weekend trip, for example, you can still read that full title because there's enough room in that long bar. And if not, you can still get the overall point. Look at the 13th. One of the events is dinner for someone's birthday. It still shows dinner and part of four. Plus, that's the only event like that I have going on this month so it's easy for me to see part of the title and I can remember exactly what that event is same thing for Labor Day you can only see labor in the title plus it has a purple star next to it so I know that it's Labor Day of course if you tap on an event or reminder it expands it you'll be able to see more details notes that may be attached to it and you can edit them through there of course and with an inward pinch you can zoom outwards and move between these monthly views it goes from details to stacked compact with an inward pinch you can zoom from compact to stacked to details and with the detailed view you can zoom in even further this expands the height of each day slash week window allowing you to see more events and reminders on each day especially for more busy days as you can see some of these events expand their tiles to show more of the title 
or even start times, but only for events. Reminders remain in their small tiles. Also, your device will give haptic feedback when you pinch between calendar views or when zooming in and out inside the details view. Again, this takes up quite a lot of room on the screen. I mean, you can only see two to three weeks with this, uh, but maybe more if you have a larger phone because my phone's actually quite small, I'm on the SE. But if you zoom to around right here, you can still see four full weeks and get the gist of most of your events. You can see it's all at a glance. Both the Calendar and Reminders apps have new splash screens describing the new features. For what's new in Calendar, it says Scheduled Reminders and Customizable Views, we already covered that. And for what's new in Reminders, it says Reminders in Calendar, we cover that. Subtasks and Smart Lists, that says View Subtasks for a Reminder while in your Today, Scheduled, or Other Smart Lists. Then Recently Deleted List, it says Find and Recover Reminders You've Deleted, and lots more. It says Try New Shortcuts in the Shortcuts app, reorder sections in your today list and enable other languages for your grocery list and settings. Overall, these are very welcome additions to the calendars app. Schedule reminders showing up at the calendar view can make planning and time management much easier without having to swipe between apps. And the new monthly views show much more information at, at a glance and provide lots of simple information for each day without tapping between several different days. I'll continue making videos about everything app related, so subscribe for more like this. I'll be covering iOS 18, new products, Apple Tele and more. For more, on the right is my most recent video, and below that, an iOS 18 playlist. I'll see you all later.